Hi there and welcome to this quick video today. I thought I would put together a tutorial together for those people that are having problems with the 10-bit 422 footage from the GH5 working in Premiere Pro. Now up until yesterday when Adobe released a new update for Premiere Pro, so 20th of April 2017, I could play 10-bit footage okay on PC and Mac. It would be a little bit sluggish but I wasn't getting any errors, I wasn't really getting any crashes. Since the update, which is the 2017.1 release, which was released around the 20th of April, I haven't been able to play back 10 bits GH5 footage at all in Premiere Pro on PC. On Mac, I've had a little bit more luck, but I'm still getting lots of crashes and errors, and it's really not a smooth process at all at the moment. Now, Adobe are aware of this, and apparently they are working on an update, but this tutorial is designed to show the workaround that exists at the moment by transcoding your footage from the GH5 into an intermediary editing codec such as DNX, HR or ProRes if you're working on a Mac. Now I'll be going through these two methods, the Mac version first and then the PC method. So you'll need to fire up Adobe Media Encoder and then add your files by clicking the plus button here, finding the MP4 files that are recorded from your GH5 and if you've got multiple ones you can select multiple clips. I'm just going to be using one for the purpose of this demonstration. And then once they've been added, you'll need to select the format. Now, if you're working on a Mac, go ahead and select QuickTime. And then from the presets, if you hit the drop down arrow, you should have a number of Apple ProRes presets. If you don't have those presets there, what you'll need to do is go ahead and download them. And I will put the link in the description. You can get them from the Adobe site. It's a small download. They have instructions of how to install them and add the presets into Media Encoder. And that link there will be in the description to download the ProRes presets. So once you've gone ahead and done that and made sure that they're added to Media Encoder, you can go ahead and select them. Now, you, the best one for encoding the GH5 is probably ProRes 42HQ. It creates slightly larger file sizes than standard 422, um, but you just get the added high quality. It's full 10 bit and obviously 422. And so that's probably the best intermediary editing codec to transcode the GH5 to uh, if you're working on a Mac. So once you've done that, you just go ahead and click the play button and Media Encoder will then spit out all your files one by one. Now, if you're working on a PC, you won't have access to ProRes. It's an Apple proprietary codec. And so the best option for PC users is DNX HR. Now, with the presets, when we go ahead, you'll see that there's lots and lots of presets for DNX HR. Now, depending on what resolution you shot your 10-bit footage will determine which preset you want. If you shot in the cinema 4K, so that's 4096 by 2160 pixels, you will want DNX HR HQX 4K24. If you shot, for example, in 3840 by 2160, you would want DNX HR HQX UHD24. And the reason you want the HQX rather than just the HQ is that HQ is only encoded at an 8 bit level. And that's uh, according to Wikipedia article on the specifications that the DNX HR HQ is 8 bit and DNX HR HQX is 10 bit 422. So once you've gone ahead and selected DNX HR HQX 4K24, then you can go ahead and click the green arrow and that will go ahead and transcode all of your files to DNX HR. Now, the two downsides to this workaround are obviously the time it takes. You've got that extra step of transcoding all your footage. And the other thing is the increased file size. Uh, the DNX HR HQX format is a roughly sort of seven to 800 megabits per second so it's quite a bit larger than the 150 megabit so in terms of the file sizes that it will spit out they will be roughly sort of five times the size of your gh5 files 
I really hope that Adobe will get a fix to this pretty soon because transcoding footage is not something that I'm a big fan of. It's something I used to do a long time ago and I've got so used to just being able to bring files natively into Premiere and work with them without transcoding. So hopefully Adobe will get this sorted ASAP. If the video has been useful, please hit the like button, subscribe for more content and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.